Katamari Damacy Reroll is a game on the Nintendo Switch and Steam, developed and published by Namco. It is a remake of the PlayStation 2 exclusive, unsurprisingly named Katamari Damacy, which roughly translates to Clump of Souls. Now most ratings of Katamari Damacy Reroll, which I will be referring to as Katamari, are positive considering that most are above 80%. So now that I've played the game a few times, am I here today to tell you that this is a game worth playing? I think it is, so in the video today, I will be explaining why I've come to adore it. But before we start, here's an early warning. This review will have spoilers, but this game's best aspects are in its gameplay, not the story. If you already know the story, that should not stop you from playing the game. Thank you. Please enjoy. Although it may not look like it, Katamari Damacy has amazing gameplay. Once you get used to the controls, movement feels terrific. The same is true for the general progression inside of the game. It may seem obvious by now, but to progress in the game, you must roll up objects and make your Katamari, the clump of objects you've collected, larger. The catch here is that you can only roll up objects the same size of your Katamari or smaller. Rolling into larger objects will stop you in your tracks and may make you lose objects. So, at a smaller size, you will not be able to capture something like a chicken egg, but at a larger size, you'll be rolling up entire islands. To me it seemed that the larger I grew my Katamari, the more satisfying it became. Picking up a building or rolling up a forest seemed to feel better than picking up a deck of cards. However, this does not mean that early levels aren't satisfying. The previously mentioned satisfaction comes from a sense of progression. You can progress in earlier levels just as well as you can in later levels, but with a different scale. What I'm trying to say is that every level of gameplay felt amazing to me. It is one of the best aspects of the game, and at least to me, can rival that of Breath of the Wild or even Sonic Boom. But what would gameplay be without controls? Now, I've heard many complaints control-wise, such as one of my friends even dropping the game at one point from their problems with the controls. I personally can see where they're coming from, as it is a bit challenging to pick up and play. But after playing for a few courses, the controls start to make a lot of sense. Nothing feels unnatural. In this game, the controls are explained when you first start it. You have to use both analog sticks in unison to move your Katamari in any direction. Point both forward to move forward, point both left to right to move left to right, and, of course, point both back to move back. This works with moving diagonally too. To turn the camera left to right, move the sticks in opposing directions, and to make a quick 180, click down on both. There are also special unrequired moves such as alternating direction rapidly to boost forward or using the R button for a wide range of view. At first, it may seem complicated, but it all just feels natural when you really get into the game. Now, off of controls, how about we get to something more vibrant? For this category, I will describe my thoughts on the game's world, the visual presentation, the overall sound design, and the music. Let's start with the world of Katamari. In this game, you are first introduced to the world of Katamari by a rather confusing and colorful cutscene. The game is not afraid to tell you how exotic your experience will be within this world. You are first introduced to the King of All Cosmos, and he immediately T-poses and hovers off into the sky. Now he's playing the guitar, and now he's driving. And then the cutscene is over. After the control sequence, it gives you another cutscene. Blink and you may miss it, but it's the main story conflict. The King has destroyed every star in the sky, and now he asks you, the Prince of All Cosmos, to rebuild every constellation and every star in the sky. Next, you are introduced to a group of people unaware of any cosmic life. The daughter of the family explains to her mother that a news report said every star in the sky had vanished. Her mother doesn't believe her and the game moves on. After you put a star in the sky, the aforementioned daughter is shown T-posing in space, a reoccurring theme, and she tells you that she can feel the cosmos. This happens after just about every star completed. Another cutscene sometimes plays showing the family's life with the stars reappearing, with the side plot of the family going to visit their dad, who is an astronaut. After you complete the moon, which is the final mission, the sun will rate how well you did by how much of his family can be on the moon. In my opinion, this story was a good add-in to the experience of the game. They did not need to add it, and you could skip every cutscene, but it's a nice touch. 
Now that we've gone over the visual appeal of the game, let's move on to the audio segment. Let's start with the overall sound design in Katamari Damacy. It's not stunning, but it is perfect for the gameplay. To elaborate, one thing that enhances the experience is the noise that occurs when you pick something up. Adding the sound that it does makes it seem like picking up something is important, which adds to the satisfaction of progression, the most important element of the game. In one way or another, that sound can motivate players to play more, which really makes me think that the sound design was done well. Now that we've gotten everything else out of the way, let's talk about the outstanding soundtrack of Katamari Damacy. Unless they were taken out, I should have had some of my favorite songs from the soundtrack playing in the background. If it's not clear enough already, I love the soundtrack and would even go as far as calling it one of my favorite soundtracks in gaming, up there with Sonic Forces and Persona 5. The music is perfect for the game. Everything is pretty percussion involved which gives it a driving feeling that encourages progression. Across the soundtrack, there are many different styles between pieces. In my opinion, it leads to a lack of monotony and amazes me how they got so many different types of styles to fit together and also sound great. Due to the nature of the game, sometimes you don't need to give your full attention to gameplay and at those points you can relax and listen to the fresh, exotic soundtrack. Now after I've spent so long talking about what I adore, let's move on to some of my complaints. Just as in any game, I do have a short list of complaints. To start, let's go even more in depth about the controls, but more specifically, let's talk about problems with the controls and starting out. When you start off, you're thrown into an arena with the King of All Cosmos watching over you, demanding you to do certain control techniques. Remember, besides the phenomenal intro cutscene, this is your introduction to the game. This is how you start playing. After you complete his demands, the King throws you into the lamest and most poorly designed level in the game. After you roll around for a bit, which you're still getting used to, you're stopped abruptly and he throws you into a real level. That is how you start out. Everything feels so quick and it's hard to get used to everything that fast. I think it took me until the fifth actual level to finally feel comfortable. Is this the worst start to a game I've played? No, definitely not. Does that make it spectacular though? It sure doesn't. Now that we're done talking about that, let's talk about Taurus and Ursa Minor. For those who don't know, there are special levels where you make a constellation instead of a single star. These levels require you to try a special challenge such as collecting tens if not hundreds of geese, or, more notably, collecting the largest bear you can. The Taurus and Ursa Minor levels are some of the most infuriating gameplay experiences out there. Put simply, you must make your Katamari big enough to collect the largest bear or cow related object you can without collecting any bear or cow related object. You can only collect one of these, and that's where the challenge comes in. Small related objects are everywhere, and not picking one up becomes very difficult. If you so happen to pick up one of these objects, you must sit through the king's ridicule and reselect the level. Luckily, you do not have to get a good score or large object to continue, making these two levels very skippable. Besides these two complaints, there are other very, very minor problems such as small bugs that don't get too much in the way of gameplay. Overall, I did not have too many problems with the game, but these are some things to consider. Overall, Katamari Damacy was a great experience. The game is very fun and infinitely replayable. It even introduced me to some great new songs to add to my playlist. Is it a perfect game? No, but it was definitely a game worth playing, and by no means do I regret playing it. Now for the rating. If I'm setting Shadow the Hedgehog and Breath of the Wild at the top and Bubsy 2 at the bottom, with New Super Mario Bros. as a perfect middle ground, I'd give Katamari Damacy Reroll a 7.5 out of 10. Thank you for making it this far, and I'll see you again next year. Goodbye. <laughs>